Microsoft's HoloLens 2 is here. Here's what you need to know. What's up, everybody? Brad here. And uh, Microsoft today announced the HoloLens 2 right on schedule. Back in 2017, I said they would announce it today. And well, here we are. And so it's kind of along the lines of exactly what we expected. And there's good news, there's bad news, but let's just kind of run through what this product is here and let's take a look at the finer piece of the hardware. Let's start with the, the specs, if you will. So it's got a 2K 3.2, 3 by 2 light engines. And what this basically means is that Microsoft has doubled the field of view for the, for the HoloLens 2. Actually, in fact, they've more than doubled it. So that is gonna make a dramatic difference in how you see the holograms in the headset. Now granted, when you're looking at the videos of this stuff on the screen and all that, keep in mind, that is gonna be better than probably what you were seeing based on my experience with the first generation. But know that they have doubled the field of view, which was one of the primary issues with the first generation product. Um, they're also introducing a new Azure Connect sensor. No big surprise there, Microsoft actually selling the Kinect sensor by itself to commercial customers for $399, which you can go grab uh, if that sounds good to you. But again, it's a commercial product. It's got accelerometer, gyroscope, magnometer, uh, eight megapixel camera for stills, and it'll do 1080p 30 uh, frames per second video which is to help you do kind of, uh, well, it, it allows other people to see what you're looking at and transfer content back and forth over a video medium, which is super helpful if you're working in a factory or anything else like that. Uh, five channel mic array, it does have speakers built in and it is running on a Snapdragon 850 processor. Uh, for connectivity, it has Bluetooth 5.0, 802.11ac connectivity. The one crucial thing that is missing here is no LTE connectivity. Despite the fact that it has a Snapdragon 850 processor in it, it will not connect natively to to the uh, to the to the cell towers. So keep that in mind. Battery life is two to three hours, which is a little bit short. But again, this is a brand new computing world and environment, and this is different. And it's not a consumer product. And by say, my name say it's not a consumer product. It's absolutely not. The price to get this thing is thirty five hundred dollars. And every demo they showed on stage was not consumer oriented. It was working in a factory. It was performing surgery. It was uh, on a construction site. Microsoft is not targeting the consumer with this. And that is not a surprise if you've been watching this channel. I've been telling you guys that's not their target market yet. It is definitely not yet. Um, primarily because it's too expensive. The frame of the device is actually made of carbon fiber. The reason they do that, hey, it makes it lighter on your head. Downside is that's more expensive. Big change too is that the visor on it flips up now. It flips up to get out of your way, which makes it easier to jump in and out of a hologram world and and seeing like re actual reality. And so uh, six degrees of freedom tracking, it has significantly improved hand tracking, by the way. The demos they were showing off make it a lot easier to just manipulate with your fingers. You don't have to do it in a slow motion or real touch to find. Uh, it, it looks much more fluid and natural. Now, their strategy for all of this is Microsoft is selling a bunch of services, uh, software and services around the HoloLens 2 to make it easier to integrate. And they talked on stage multiple times about instant value add for your company. There's no more building up projects and broad building things out. They're saying that day one, you're gonna get value out of this thing. They're also integrating it heavily with Microsoft's enterprise platform, Dynamics 365, and they have tutorials and other things that are working along with that. Um, it will fit over your glasses. So if you wear glasses, no big surprise there, the last one worked. And it of course encompasses all of Microsoft software and services um, like Office and all that good stuff can be used. Now, other things they talked about that are super interesting here is Microsoft is going totally open with this. They are not talking about walled gardens in any way. Um, they are saying that you can build your own app store that lives outside the Microsoft store. So if you're a company and you want, if you're Adobe and you want to build an Adobe HoloLens store, you can do that and it'll be a first class citizen. Browsers, been a big topic of Microsoft lately. Uh, they're building a Chromium based browser. Firefox is building a native browser for HoloLens. Now there's also gonna be the Microsoft version, but HoloLens is gonna be there. They are going completely open. There is nothing off limits with this. And it's a smart move from Microsoft. They want the HoloLens to be the hub of this next generation of computing. And they're not limiting it in any capacity because they know that, hey, if they said it had to go through the Microsoft store, that's a big limiting factor to a lot of different companies. So by making the hardware open, it's kind of crazy to be talking about Microsoft and open so much, but that's the world that they live in. And so this device is available for pre-order right now for 3,500 bucks, if that's what you want to do. Now, the consumer side of it, which is what a lot of people are probably disappointed in, but again, 
it's not targeted at that. It's in the works, but you got to remember, Microsoft makes most of its money in the enterprise. They still hold a four hundred and eighty million dollar contract to the military. That's where they make their money. That's how they. That's how they're going to drive that price down. It went from five thousand dollars for the old one to thirty five hundred. So you can imagine we're probably one or two iterations away from it being closer to a much more palatable price point of, of say, even a thousand dollars. So, a couple things to note here. Uh, it, it's coming quick. You can pre-order it now. It is a significant improvement over the first generation one. No major surprises. We got the wider field of view. We got the Snapdragon 850 that we knew. We knew that it was going to be a higher resolution displays. Overall, it looks like a great update for Microsoft. It really does. I, I question announcing at, at Mobile World Congress because that was an interesting venue and the audience did not seem to care about any of this stuff. I gotta say, I am. This is really, really, really cool technology, and I'm gonna be curious to see how else Microsoft can apply this. But at the same time, it's gonna take some time for it to work its way down to the consumer level. That being said, I have a sneaking suspicion that Microsoft could charge less for the hardware. You can imagine that if another company comes out with a headset that says two thousand dollars, because of the way Microsoft is positioning this in the enterprise, you to get the most value out of it, you need Azure. And Azure is a service, and, and people pay for that. Microsoft could very easily lower the price of the hardware just to get people to buy in, knowing that they're going to make money on that software side a lot, kind of like what they do with the Xbox. Not a crazy idea. But for now, it's 3500 bucks. The field is wide open. Microsoft is pretty much running alone right now, although I do suspect other players are coming. We know that Amazon is working on something. We know that Google is working on something. We know that Magic Leap is working on something. But Microsoft's the only one shipping. So until, until that changes... Um, they can pretty much get away with just about whatever they want. So, guys, that's a quick and dirty what you need to know about HoloLens 2 as we learn more, and I'll be doing more deep dives into it here in the near future. But have yourselves a wonderful day.